blue, 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 blue. Look around the room, do it now. Look for everything you see that's blue. Okay, sweet. <laughs> Again, then you go like, let's say green, 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 green. Look around the room, see what's green. Okay, all of a sudden you stop noticing the blue stuff, okay? You see more green than you saw blue the first time and the second time, yeah? Okay. Essentially all that is, is it's your body looking for stuff, it's seeing stuff, it's creating patterns and responses and turning your sensory system into a higher level of awareness. So if you always look for negativity, what are you going to find? Negativity. If you always see the glasses half full, what are you going to see? A lot of half full glasses. If you always see threats and problems, what are you going to see? Threats and problems. If you see solutions, what do you get? Solutions. It's why gratitude journals are so important. It's why being thankful for stuff is so important. You know, the happier you can be with the stuff you have, the more you're gonna get of it. And the last one then is just wear nice shit. Um, like, <laughs> girls more so than guys will probably understand this, but like, let's say from a female perspective, like you wake up in the morning and you put on your house clothes. You feel a certain way. You get dressed up, you get your hair done, you get your makeup done, you get your nails done. You buy this beautiful new dress and you get your tan done and you put that on and you get ready to go out. You're in completely different states then. Like, I'm pretty sure everyone would agree you feel a hell of a lot more confident when you're wearing nice things and when you feel better, right? Yeah? So why wouldn't you bring that into your life all of the time? Like, why would you actively do stuff day to day that's making you feel like shit? You probably don't even realize it's happening. Like just a simple effect of, you know, for guys having a shave and like putting some gel into your hair and washing. Like you'll feel better for it. Like if I came in here and I was like unshaven in a pair of dirty tracksuit bottoms, I'd feel like crap and the presentation would probably go like, yeah, thanks Emma. <laughs> I'd feel like crap and the presentation probably would go like crap because of it because I'd be in the wrong brain set. I'd be in my confrontation brain. I'd be in my worried animal brain instead of being in my logical human brain. So again, I know trying to get your head around this stuff can be kind of challenging and kind of difficult. Um, so it's nice to have a couple of breaks every now and again. Really, at the end of the day, whenever you're trying to set a goal or whenever you're trying to achieve something, there's only one question you ever need to ask yourself. A question is, how do I feel about doing it? Because if you don't want to do it, if you don't like the idea of doing it, and if it's something you don't look forward to, you're probably not going to do it. If you don't like going to the gym, if you don't enjoy training, you're probably not going to keep going. If you don't like a certain kind of food, you're probably not going to keep eating it. If you don't feel excited about something like taking on a new challenge, you're probably not going to do it. So, why would you do stuff in your life you hate? Like, it, make, it makes absolutely no sense to actively start your day pursuing stuff you dislike. And again, that's the logical brain talking. Inside your body, you might be going, yeah, but fuck you, James. I've got to do this. I've got to do that. I've got all this other bullshit going on in my life that you don't know about because I'm in a shit position and you're so lucky. That's not your brain talking. It's your mind talking. Or it's not your mind. It's your brain. Again, it's your body reacting and your brain reacting to a set of threats because it doesn't feel safe in the environment because it's going, he doesn't understand me. He doesn't know what I'm going through. So I'm just going to lash out at him because, you know, fuck James. So really ask yourself before you do anything, how do I feel about doing it? Because at the end of the day, until you have safety, you can never get to growth. So what this long, and again, I'll send you the slides in the video so that you can revisit this. Really what we're talking about safety is, do I feel comfortable and confident with this thing I'm about to undertake? If I am about to start something new, how do I feel about doing it? Do I feel reasonably good about it? Okay, that's your safety. Do I feel like it's gonna be something that's beneficial for my life? Because out of that safety, you get to explore the idea. You get to look at the different things you can do. You get to come back to this example and you get to say, right, my safety is I'm talking to this guy who's, let's say he's a trainer, and I'm reasonably happy he knows what he's doing, that he's not gonna make fun of me, he's not gonna mock me, and he's not gonna break me in half. So let's explore what I need to do. Okay, so he's saying, I need to do like 100% intensity for six weeks to get to where I want to go. 
fuck, I don't want to do that. So what can I do to explore my different options? So your exploration then starts to lead to clarity. Because initially if somebody says you've got to do this, this and this, it's very easy to go, oof, is that all I can do? Or is there not a different way? So you explore the different ways of doing things. Out of that exploration comes clarity. You develop ideas about how to achieve goals. The clarity leads to understanding, better understanding of the process and better understanding of what you need to do to get from A to B. That understanding then leads to actual belief that you can do it. Because if you don't believe you can do it, you can't do it. Okay, nobody who's ever achieved anything has set out going, I'm not going to achieve this. They've probably set out with some sort of belief that they're going to make something happen. The belief then leads to trust. Trust in the person, trust in yourself and trust in the process. Actually knowing that you can make it happen. And out of that thrust, thrust? <laughs> Awkward. Um, out of that trust <laughs> comes action. Okay? You finally start doing stuff. You actually start chasing after your goal. The action means you have to change stuff. The more things you change, the better your habits become. When you develop a set of new habits and you hold on to them for long enough, you get real transformation. When you've transformed and developed as a person, you hit that top of Maslow's pyramid, you end up growing as a person. And what does that lead to? New threats. <laughs> <laughs> you're fucked. You're right, right back where you started again. Um, and that kind of makes sense because like, you're like sharks. You've got to keep moving forwards. Like, I would probably pretty confidently say this. There's nobody really in the world who's happy exactly where they are. You might be satisfied and content, but you can always kind of see something you'd like or somewhere you'd like to move on to. Look at the most successful people in the world. They're always moving forwards. Look at like even athletes, they're always chasing PBs. Everybody is trying to move forwards in some way at some rate. Some people will want to do it faster, some people will want to do it slower, but everyone is trying to move forwards and grow. And with that growth comes new threats because anytime you grow and anytime you develop, you've removed your prediction and response because you're moving somewhere new, you've taken away your safety, you're back to uncertainty, and you've got to go through this entire process all over again. And that's fine because you understand it, you know what you're doing and you know where it's going to lead. So, really, the only purpose of a goal is to make life better. Like I said at the start, don't do shit you hate. Don't try and take challenges you don't want to do because you're going to fail. Willpower is just another way of saying, I don't fucking want to do this, but I feel like I have to. You're not going to do it. Like, don't bullshit yourself. Don't lie to yourself. Why would you start a process and actively get into something you know is going to lead you down an unhappy path. At the end of the day, like we're not here for a long time, we're here for a good time. Hmm? Will, willpower, it's just another way of saying, I don't want to do something, it's just doing shit I don't want to do. Like if I need to will myself into eating broccoli and carrots every day, I'm not going to do it, so I just don't eat broccoli. There's other things I can eat that I'm more comfortable with and happier with. If you wake up for too many days in a row, you don't feel right about something, the real solution is your brain's invitation to just fucking change it. So really what you're looking for is find something you enjoy, find something you're passionate about, find something you're reasonably confident and certain you can do and chase after it. Get help to go there, find people who've done it, speak to people who can help you develop because otherwise Where are we gone? You fail on this before you've even got started because you've no clarity, understanding, belief or trust. So you end up going absolutely nowhere. You stay where you always have, you stay pissed off, you stay frustrated and you lead an unhappy life. And nobody really wants to do that. Do you? No, I didn't think so. Okay. Um, I'm, just, I'm really conscious with this sort of stuff that we can, like we could literally spend all day talking about it and you wouldn't get anything out of it. All I really wanted to do today is just sow the seed of kind of the stuff that's going on behind you um, and the stuff that's going on in the back of your head. We're going to talk a bit more now over the coming months about how to actually take stuff and make it happen. Like Sarah has a brilliant goal setting model as part of the Better Life Project where you look at, you know, what, what sort of stuff do you want to achieve and how do you get to your goal? Do you mind if I draw this up? No? copyrighted, had to ask. So like, <laughs> it's where you are now, it's where you want to be. And you know, you've all seen like the, the diagram where like you want to go like this, 
but it actually tends to look more like that. So what you need is really some way of getting there. So let's say this is your big primary goal, whatever that is. Um, for me, like let's say right now my goal is a total 700 kilos in powerlifting. So I'm a little bit away from that at the moment and I know I'm not going to get it straight away. So what I need is, I need a couple of milestones that will show me I'm going the right way. So like checkpoints, things that when I've achieved them I know I'm on the route to my goal. In order to get from here to here, I have a number of tasks I've got to complete. So I've got like maybe three things I need to do. This could be train three days a week, sleep eight hours a night and eat X number of calories per day. To get from the next one then they change to different goals and then they keep moving on. And eventually, once I've done it all, I get to my goal. But with that, in any of those tasks, unless you're very confident you can achieve them, there's no point setting out to do it. Like, let's say I picked a random person in this room and I said, in the next year, I'm going to make you a national bench press champion. You should look at me straight away and go, no, you're not. Um, <laughs> it doesn't matter how much I believe it, because if you don't believe it, it's not going to happen. So all of a sudden, like we know that's an impossible task because you're not believing it. What if I said instead, in the next year, I'm going to add two and a half kilos to your bench press. Everyone will come rushing towards me because they all believe it could happen. Instead, I go, okay, you know, in the next year, we're going to push to add 20 kilos to your bench press. And there'll be a few of you who'll go, yeah, I've fucking, I've got that, no problem. And then we can start looking at it because you're already reasonably confident. So the goal and the tasks you pick have to be things you're already reasonably confident on. There's no point in trying to go from like zero to 100 in like two weeks because it's just simply not going to happen. Okay, you can say you want to do it and logically you might feel like you can do it, but you know, in the deeper parts of your brain, it's going to put the brakes on and tell you to piss off. So we're going to do some goal setting workshops. We're going to talk a bit more about how to actually set, track and measure and manage goals and how to actually like achieve stuff rather than think about stuff, fail and get pissed off because look, like I said, the purpose of a goal is to make your life